Hello and welcome to this webcast on Big Data and Hadoop, moving from strategy to production. My name is Paul Barsh. I'm Marketing Director for Think Big and I'll be hosting and moderating our presentation today. There's a lot of companies that are still kicking the tires with big data initiatives. There are others that are challenged with moving from strategy to production. There's a lot of reasons. Lack of skills, alignment between business and IT. Sometimes it's identifying and prioritizing the right use cases for Hadoop. Still others get stuck in various phases, moving from strategy to development or from development to production. So today we're gonna to show you how to avoid traps and pitfalls that we see a lot of companies struggling with so that you can succeed with your big data initiatives. Our webinar today is led by Mike Portel, Director of Client Services at Think Big. At Think Big, Mike has been a project director for several high profile Hadoop engagements, including a project that he's on right now for an end to end data lake deployment spanning strategy, implementation, and support. If you don't know, Think Big provides data science and engineering services that enable organizations to accelerate their time to value from big data. Service offers include big data roadmap, data lake architecture and implementation, analytic solution enablement, and ongoing solution support. Let's take care of a couple of housekeeping items before we begin the presentation. I want to bring your attention to some of the items or icons on your console. Now the first one is, this is a very important one, there is a Q&A module or widget, so locate that. I encourage you to ask questions as they come to mind throughout the webcast. We will address some of these questions at the close of the presentation, and fear not, if we don't get to your question, we will address it via email after the webcast. There are also some other icons at the bottom of your screen to explore. So there's a resource link icon that will allow you to learn more about big data strategy. There is a share icon which will allow you to send this webinar's detail to a friend or colleague via social media vehicles. And here's an important one, there's a help button for assistance with any technical difficulties you might ex be experiencing. So if you can't hear or the slides aren't moving or what have you, raise your hand using that help button and we will assist you. We're also gonna be sending out links to this webinar replay and a follow-up email, so if you can't get to all of it today, we will send that out to you. All right, so now before I turn it over to Mike, we wanna run a quick poll. And the question is, how far along are you in your big data journey? So first one is, we have no idea what we're doing with big data. We're just starting to build our Hadoop cluster. We have begun application development on our Hadoop cluster. Or we have deployed applications to production on Hadoop. So take just a second and answer that. All right, let's see what the poll results have. All right. Well, Mike, this is interesting. Uh, it looks like the lion's share of the audience, what, it's actually a mixed bag. Some of them are just starting to build out the Hadoop cluster. Some of them have no idea what they're doing, and then some of them are actually deploying applications on production to Hadoop. So welcome, Mike, and thanks for, for participating with us today, and the floor is yours. Thanks, Paul. So I'll use some of that output from that poll question there to see if I can add some more emphasis onto the content that I'm, I'm showing here today. Just give you guys an, an overview of what I want to talk about. Um, so I've been at Think Big for almost four years now, helping clients move into the big data space, begin their journey, uh, develop applications, and then move those into production. And I want to give you guys this sense of things that I've seen over those years, some pitfalls that our customers have had that we've helped them through, some pitfalls that we've seen ourselves as we're working with an emerging technology. And I also want to give you guys some guiding posts for each one of these different phases. And when I talk about phases, meaning moving from kind of a standing start to so those that are saying don't know much about big data or how you're going to be using big data internally, Going from a standing start 
to implementing a strategy, going from a strategy to development and then development for production, as Paul said as well. So give you guys some ideas and, and tips for success, some common pitfalls, and then it's always interesting to kind of go through a couple use cases as well. So we have clients that we've been working with and we have multi-year relationships with um, and, and showing you guys real world examples of how those clients have successfully navigated from one phase to the next. So that's really going to be the, the, the guts of what I'm going to talk about today. And the starting point, we believe, for any journey into big data, it needs to start with a strategy. So it's probably valuable for me to at least make a case for a big data strategy and, and why an organization needs to invest in that before they do any sort of application development. So we've got a, a lot of customers as Hadoop and big data, and I'll use those terms interchangeably, become more pervasive within the enterprise, they're, they're starting to experiment with these technologies. They're starting to put their, together their own ideas of how they're going to move forward with the technology itself, right? And our entry point with clients is oftentimes they've done some pre-work. They've, they've, they've done some research into how they're going to use Hadoop as a value uh, provider within their organization. However, they, they commonly come up across a number of challenges and, and just pointing out a couple of them here on this slide that we oftentimes we'll see organizations have a low hanging fruit business value use case that they know that Hadoop can help them solve. And they'll build a minimum thread, minimum viable product, a prototype, or even put something to end users off of that specific use case. And they'll get to a point where, okay, we'll, we're ready for, for the implementation of the next use case. What's next? How can we help the business? And, and have realized that they've really, they've really developed a solution for one single use case that somewhat handcuffs them. So we'll have to come in and do some remedi remediation on the cluster possibly on the applications that are deployed in there, and it can really stall your start into fast investment, fast getting value quickly out of, out of Hadoop as well. A second example is a technology team looking at how they're going to use big data internally from a strategy perspective, but not pairing that with the business units. Really, a big data strategy needs to be a combination of business vision and technology vision. And you can, you can come out with a great plan of how you're going to uh, invest in the big data, which use cases you're going to tackle, what applications you're going to spin up. But without the appropriate sponsorship from both business and technology, it's not going to be able to move forward. So not having those groups involved up front is a common stumbling point as well. So, so what, is a, what does a big data strategy provide? And I'll get into that in a bit more detail, but at a high level here, it's, it's an analysis of how Hadoop is going to drive business value. It's a collaboration between your business teams and your technology teams about how, how both groups can drive value out of using Hadoop. It's a roadmap of those workshops and the collaborate, collaboration and the vision from both those units on how you're going to sequence a deployment of Hadoop internally, how you're, you know, what architecture investments are going to be made, what data sets are going to be landed first, and getting agreement from a larger group to say, here's what the next 12 months looks like. Let's get started quickly. Let's have a vision for what our, what our plan is moving forward. And then, of course, a comprehensive architecture definition. And what I mean by architecture definition, this isn't a design specification or detailed design. It's a, it's a high-level architecture that identifies the core functions of a Hadoop solution that's going to support those use cases that are on your roadmap, the use cases that were driven from the business and technology teams. Okay, so, so let's say you're an organization, and I saw a number of people on the poll, that is going from a standing start 
and wants to engage in a big strategy project, what are some of the guiding factors for success to do that? This has taken, you know, think big, we've probably uh, done this engagement 20 or so times with our customers. It's, a, it's the most common entry point for an enterprise into big data. So think about what you should do to guide success to come out successfully of a roadmap engagement. Mentioned this on the previous slide, integrating business and technology vision. It's not a combination. It's not two parallel visions that you put on top of each other on a plan. They help each other out. They sequence and support each other. You're identifying the stakeholders who are going to drive that roadmap for the next 12 months. You're really focusing on the value from the business and the technology side. You're identifying your target architecture. Avoid tunneling in on one use case. So when you're, when you're identifying your use cases, you're going to have a top 10, you're going to prioritize them, and they're going to have specific associated functions within a solution. Ensuring that your architecture design supports all those functions and features, whether it's real-time, long-term storage, who's accessing that data? Are you, are you exporting a data set to Hadoop for end users? Right? What, what are the different tools? What's your distribution going to be? Metadata strategy. Right? Thinking about all the functions within a solution and ensuring that you're not building for one, two, three, or four use cases, but you're understanding what your long-term value is. Because if you create, a, if you create a, a solution for your top 10 use cases, oftentimes what you have will support the next 30. And this is, this is something that I often have to talk to my clients about is Hadoop isn't a cure-all. Right. Um, it's not, and this is an opinion, I guess, maybe of, of think big, because I think there might be some differing opinions. But for us and what we've seen in the market, it's not going to replace your existing data warehouse. It's going to be complementary to what you already have. And in a, in a, a quote from one of my engineers, it can very well be your system of truth, but most likely not your system of record. We don't see a lot of clients in their initial steps uh, migrating a business critical application to Hadoop, transactional applications. I'm not saying it can't get there in the next few years, but when we're thinking about how we're going to implement an emerging technology, a new technology into an enterprise, uh, those really aren't the targets. And Hadoop is not going to solve all of your business, or all of your data challenges, all of your different data needs. Things to keep an eye out for. I've harped on this already a couple times. Lack of business sponsorship. It really can be a stopping point. Um, business teams need to be involved in the discussion. They need to have buy-in and they need to be approved on the plan moving forward. Investing too early in the cluster. Now, don't take this as saying you shouldn't experiment. You should absolutely experiment. But some of you on the call are going to have the opportunity to work with your existing data warehouse vendor who are uh, deploying their own appliances. And in your, in your next opportunity with them, you'll, you'll get a Hadoop appliance and you'll allow your DBAs to experiment in there, your data science teams to experiment in there. Think about what that, that environment is eventually going to be used for. Because I'll engage with a client and for a big data strategy, they'll have an existing cluster, cluster in place. And that cluster will, is then going to be used for the application development or per, potentially a pre-prod environment. And a lot of remediation will need to be done because who's had access to that cluster? How has it been configured? How have the different applications been set up? Um, so thinking about experiment, absolutely, but what is that environment going to be used for in the future? And will you need to do any remediation on that environment to get your application development going? 
So, so those, those are some success factors, common pitfalls that I see going from a standing start to completing a big data strategy. Maybe I give you guys a viewpoint of, of how we view a method and a process for a big data strategy engagement at our clients. So this, this stuff isn't secret sauce, right? You guys are probably looking at the slide right now and looking at the different phases. They should be familiar from a, from a strategy engagement and what you do. What, what's really the value that's driven out is the content itself within the deliverables. So I'll walk, or walk quickly through these different sections. Obviously, we start out with discovery. So those are the workshops, a couple weeks on site of myself and my team working with business and technical teams to really drive out use case definition, right? It's, it's seeding conversation with business teams that may have no idea what Hadoop is or do they care where, you know, I don't even mention any of the technologies. I don't mention big data. But what we're doing is we're talking about data challenges they have, data opportunities that they see. We're using use cases from, from other uh, clients that we've worked with in the past. We ask questions, you know, you know what, what, what type of reports are you doing today? What if you get that report in six minutes instead of six hours? Do you have access to these if you had access to these multiple different data sets and they were no longer siloed, you could ask questions of those data sets. What would you ask and how would that be valuable? What external data sets would be valuable for you to use, right? What, what questions would you want to ask of the data but you can't because your, your existing data warehouse doesn't have the capacity? It's too costly, right? So we ask those types of questions kind of see the use case. Use case is something that has defined business value that can be, that can be attributed in Hadoop, right? So we get a list of use cases, typically 50, 60 different use cases from all these business units. We're looking at the ones that we can specifically apply to Hadoop. And then we, in, the, in our second phase there, we start to score them against a number of different criteria. Criteria, for example, could be organizational readiness. Since we spend two, three weeks with their teams, we get a sense of the skill sets internally from, from your analyst perspective, from data scientists, but also from your technology team, and we would score that against organizational readiness. How ready is the organization to build this type of solution? But also criteria should be aligned to direct business goals and business objectives. What, what business goals does the organization have over the next 12 months? And should we, we should be able to score these use cases and come up with the, you know, the cream of the crop here, the top 10, the top 12, which goes into that second phase as well as when we're talking about that architecture definition. How do we create a solution that will support those top 10 use cases? And like I said, if you create a solution that, top, that supports those top 10, you're going to get coverage of much more than those 10. But those are those 10 that are going to go on your 12-month roadmap. The third phase there, readiness analysis, is going back kind of organizational readiness. These are new technologies. Um, thinking that, that you can take your existing uh, DBA, your existing um, administrator, and make them a Hadoop systems administrator um, is not that easy, right? So it's identifying different skill gaps. We're looking to help support and enable our clients. So when we go on site, we're doing a lot of training over the shoulder, side-by-side um, -side work with them, where we want to enable them to take these solutions over at, rather than just building them and, and, and maintaining them ourselves. So how do you build a capability within your organization to take on these new tools to execute those use cases over the 12, 12 months? We do use case mapping. So we'll know that if we look at the use cases, we'll, we'll, we'll identify what are the access patterns for those use cases. How does the end user get the data from that use case? Kind of drives the, the tools and the applications you'll have in your cluster. What data sets are associated with those use cases? That's going to give you an idea of you know, which data sets you're going to be landing first, second, and third. And then the final phase there is, is the roadmap. We're piecing it all together in a sequence plan with those business and technology stakeholders, getting buy-in from both, 
making sure they're complementary, layering the use cases and the length of time it's going to take to implement that with the architectural investments that's going to be made with the different tooling inside of your cluster. Again, the different data sets that are going to be landed in that cluster. And then also business milestones. Are you working with sensitive data and you need to get sign off? Is there a marketing campaign that's going to be using some of this data uh, that you need to have a use case finished before that certain time? So we'll talk also about business milestones and how that lines up with a plan. And really what you're looking at is your going forward investment into big data over the next 12 months or so. So, like I said, we've done this 20 plus times with clients. It might be good to go over a, a use case, an example of where we've done this recently. So, just wrapped up um, a project that we had for uh, a medical nonprofit that facilitates organ transplant throughout the country. And what was really the trigger for them to look at into a big data strategy was they were doing an IT reorganization. So they're bringing in new talent, new people, um, which is a fantastic opportunity to look at new, new technologies that can help support your business challenges, your data challenges, and your data needs. So they were really looking to build something that was going to transition very hands-on manual reporting tasks to Hadoop for more efficiency and also identify new sources of revenue with their data. So within the medical industry and where they're placed, they have a number of different partners who subscribe to their data. But they, weren't able, they were unable to provide some of it in a timely manner. They had other data that was sitting in silos that they couldn't give to their partners. They're really looking to create this core repository that their partners could subscribe to. They would easily push data to them and find new sources of revenue from the data itself. So what are some of the challenges that we saw with this client? Motivation and workload. Motivation first, so this was a customer who had seen um, uh, promises not being cut by the IT organization. So when I'm, when I'm working with the nurses, talk about you know, what their day-to-day -day looks like and how they interact uh, with the data for their job, you know, they've been given promises by the IT organization that have been kept through. Obviously, that's why had a bit of a, of a reorganization. So getting this, these people re-motivated and, and talking to how you, can, how you can make their jobs a bit easier with the use cases and the solutions that, that are being proposed, getting them excited about what you're doing um, and getting them involved. And the second one is workload. So keep in mind, if you're engaging an organization in a big data strategy, it's obviously key that you identify stakeholders but also talk to their teams. So there needs to be an expectation set up front that how much time you're going to need from them. Um, my previous slide, you saw that our, our big data strategies are typically six to eight weeks. We'll have a sponsor on the other side uh, with the customer where we'll need anywhere between uh, five to eight hours from them a week. And then the people that we're talking to, maybe, maybe one or two hours a week. So setting that expectation up front uh, with people who have their day jobs already, and then you're asking them to do more and meet with you more. Key success, focusing on the value themes. So this is a bit different than the criteria, but what are the themes within the organization, and, and what is the strategy from an organizational perspective um, that's being driven? For this specific customer, it was creating new sources of revenue with what they have already in-house. It was bettering their reporting in-house, and it was bettering the relationships that they have with their partners, whether it's through more responsive reporting, um, providing data to those sponsors, or new opportunities and new data that they can provide to their, their partners and their sponsors. So this client recently wrapped up their strategy engagement. They're in um, they're racking and stacking hardware right now. Uh, this distribution has been um, determined, and they're going to start their implementation phase here very shortly. So thinking about that, you know, how does, a, how does an organization transition from strategy to implementation, and what should they keep in mind? So same format here. 
guiding success when you're moving from your strategy engagement to spinning up an engineering team and really starting development. Accelerating the business value. So I've said the word business value a lot already, but identifying that use case that's really going to show more immediate business value. If, if I'm presenting a roadmap and, and I'm saying, you know, we're going to uh, replatform your reporting application and it's going to take eight months. It's going to provide extreme value, but it's going to take eight months. It's difficult to get the organization on board. You want to show immediate value within the organization. And my, when I mean immediate, six to eight weeks, right? Is there a minimum vial product or a prototype that you can build? A minimum thread where you can get the end user involved, all right? Buying off more than you can chew up front is going to lead to delayed delivery cycles. And asking the organization to wait eight to 10 months for an for application to be deployed is, is a bit much. So you want to identify something that you can show value in in the more immediate. Define your operation support plan. It's not as fun, right? Operation support plan is your typical ITIL stuff. But it's more important in this space. So my application teams work very closely with the operations team. So like I said, it's a completely different skill set. Your systems administrator is going to be tagged most times to be your Hadoop administrator. There's a big learning curve, right? And the application teams typically rely on your operations team to support them in configuring the cluster, configuring Zookeeper, and restarting applications. Um, it becomes really important to build a closer relationship than you are typically used to with your application and your operations team. It's no longer just submitting a ticket and having something done. It's, it's more along the lines of we need to get on the phone to troubleshoot an issue we're having with Zookeeper. We think it's a problem with, with the configuration. Let's work on this together. These are new technologies. You're going to have to make more investment from an operations side to get this up and running to build those skills internally. And then checks and balances on data quality. So you can imagine that you're coming out of the strategy engagement. You've done your analysis on your use cases. The top five uh, all have a common data set. And that data set is the first one you're going to land in, into your cluster. To give you an example of some of the challenges w that we've seen in the past, um, at a high-tech manufacturer, device data, they make computer storage devices, so a, a disk drive, right? Uh, number of different versions, they're making new ones every year. And the log data that's stored on those devices are different for each version. And each version has a different data definition. And historically, you haven't looked at all of that data over the past you know, five, 10 years. Your analysts and your business typically look at the past couple versions. So now you're wanting to do, say you want to do historical analysis on all that log data that, you, that you've been collecting but not really do anything with over the past five years. It's all from a different data definition, right? You, you have to understand how it's going to be used how you can keep checks and balances on your data quality to ensure that when it is pushed to an end user, it is serviceable. See, what you're basically doing is you're, you're taking data sets that are currently not serviceable by the business, and they couldn't be in its current state and trying to make them serviceable. So keeping an eye out for that when you're landing your first few data sets, understanding what the, the end user is going to see and how, how it needs to be stored and where it needs to be pushed. Keeping an eye out, Hadoop ecosystem evolves quickly in a good way, right? There's new capabilities that are being introduced, major capabilities that are being introduced, you know, every six months. And companies want to take advantage of these new capabilities. What you have to be watch out for is in-flight alteration. I'll give you an example of, of, from one of, one of my projects. Um, we were working side by side with another uh, application team who was developing applications for, this, for the, cl the cluster that we were working on. They wanted to take, the business wanted to take advantage of Impala, but we were using 
and, 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 and don't quote me on this because I don't know if Impala was included, but we were using CDH 3.2, say. And Impala, or what they wanted included, or the features they wanted included with Impala was, was in 4.5, CDH 4.5. So they wanted to support that upgrade. And for us, it was, we were, we, our core repository was HBase. So going from 3.2 to 4.5 also in, included an upgrade for HBase. Well, we've been developing an application for the past three months. So a massive amount of code remediation was needed on our end to support the business needs and what they wanted to get out of a new version of Hadoop. So watch out for that. Watch out for um, changes in the environment, the upgrades, and how that's going to affect your existing application. Custom software development's hard, right? And, and, and people who are venturing into this are, are kind of at, at the forefront of it. And not, not all the problem areas have been identified. You're going to come up to them. The other one's change management for analysts. Get your end users, your data scientists, your business analysts involved early. Start building minimum threads to them, pushing data to them, getting them comfortable and familiar with the new data sets that they'll be working with. Garner feedback from them, right? It's an investment you make now so that when you do deploy into production, you're going to have less issues when you're doing user acceptance, when users are actually starting to work with the data itself. Okay. So thinking about a company who did this well. So this goes back to my example around uh, checks and balances on data quality. High-tech manufacturer looking to drive more value out of what they call the DNA of the drive itself, right, the log data. They want to reduce the amount of time for, to produce those disk drives. They want to reduce the amount of time it takes for yield improvement. They want to increase customer satisfaction by doing predictive analytics on uh, different configurations of that disk drive. And they want to work with their customers to identify problems before that happens. So using historical log data from these disk drives that wasn't traditionally used before, driving new analytics on that information. Challenges that they saw, managing expectations, so when you're coming um, out of a sales engagement with, with some of your vendors, the expectations from your business units might be different than what's actually being built. Hadoop may have been sold as that cure-all that I mentioned earlier. So managing expectations with people on, on what's actually feasible and what they actually will want to do and, and why they won't want to use Hadoop in another manner. That was a challenge for this particular project. So it's talking with the stakeholders, getting them comfortable with what you're building, and talking them through why utilizing Hadoop in a certain way might not be the best approach. Rapid value versus stabilizing for production. So I mentioned earlier, target a use case where you can show business value in six to eight weeks. Well, if you're doing that, you're most likely not hardening your cluster for production. I'm not saying you're cutting corners but you're, 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 you're building something to show that minimal value to continue a specific investment. You still want to do that. You want to make sure you're not cutting corners around stabilizing your environment for pre-prod or production itself. Having a target environment in mind, ensuring that um, you're using best practice for eventual performance on that cluster, right? So it's a balance that basically you're your engineering team, your application team is going to need to find. You know, what can they push off later in terms of configuration, in terms of performance, versus showing something of value more readily? Key success for them, develop an environment. So you come out of your big data strategy with that architecture definition. You got your use cases. You know what functions you want to support. You know what tooling you're going to be using. You know what distribution of Hadoop you're going to be working on. Get your engineering team started. Uh, we call it uh, a walking skeleton. You know, bigger deployment so that your engineering team is working 
in the same environment. They understand what their target cluster is. They can start to build the bones of the application itself while more detailed design specification, architecture specification is happening. Right? And as, as those decisions are made from an architectural standpoint, then you can start to build really the, the muscle, the meat behind your application. But getting your environment set up, going the basics with your team, getting them comfortable with the, with the applications that they're using because it may be their first time in this, setting your standards. But build that minimum thread, build that minimum uh, walking skeleton of the applications you know you're going to be using. Your core repository, repository is going to be on HBase. You're going to be using Cloudera. Right? Get, that, get that environment set up for your engineers. And then keeping the faith. You know, organizations who are adopting um, big data are making an investment, um, not only in an emerging technology, but open source tools as well. And, a lot of, and, and some of the work is, is custom development that we're doing here. Um, custom development's hard. It can be difficult. It can be challenges. Open source software. It's going to be, you're going to find bugs that aren't easily identifiable and not a lot of people have ran into, you keep the faith, right? A lot of organizations have found extreme success in utilizing Hadoop within their data organization. And you will too, but you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna come up against challenges. And planning for that, ensuring it's appropriate risk and contingency within, within your project is important. So this, Use case here, this, this is a multi-year relationship we've had with this client. Um, what I'm showing you here is something that happened about a year ago. They've deployed um, uh, multi-stage application into production twice now, where they're supporting the application itself and, and building a new one now. So thinking about how this organization went from development into production we can talk about that next. So, so what are some guiding success? So I, I understand that, that these aren't groundbreaking as you read them, but they're points of importance that we've found ourselves when working with Hadoop. So yes, capacity planning and performance testing are no does and something you, you put in place, but let me talk to their uh, maybe a bit more of importance when you're moving to a production environment. So on, on the capacity planning side, you want to do your test runs in your pre-prod environments. You want to chunk those out, right? So, so going back to your design specification, what data is it you're going to store? What data sets are you going to store? Um, you've got a number of redundant silos. Are you going to take all of those and understand that you have a, a a large amount of redundant data within your core repository? What type of metadata are you producing? What kind of mappings are you doing? What transformations are you doing with your data? You have the opportunity here to really expand the amount of data that's going to be stored from what, what is originally ingested or what, what's originally from the source to what gets ingested and once, what gets landed on your data set that, or what gets landed on your cluster. Um, it, it, it can be somewhat of an explosion of data. So chunking that out and, you know, if your historical data set is, you know, 10 terabytes, do a terabyte in your pre-prod environment. See what that looks like. See what the footprint is going to be. Ensure that you've got the appropriate capacity in your production environment. You have an opportunity then to either trim maybe drop some tables that aren't going to be as important. You take that opportunity then to do your capacity planning and to see what your footprint's going to be. Performance testing. So running pre jobs like TerraSort to really get your baseline on your cluster and then running that ingestion again and seeing what the performance is. It gives you an opportunity to tune your cluster before we really start tuning your application. I think your biggest advantages in, in, in um, performance 
is going to be on the on the cluster side. So to give you a use case here, we were ingesting only five terabytes of historical data, and we were storing metadata on every field, uh, an immense amount of metadata. There was a lot of redundant data that we were using. And for five terabytes to be, to, to be mapped, ingested, took 30 days because of, because of what, was, what was being done. Now, that's obviously not acceptable. You, we would say that it was an extrapolation that it would have taken 30 days on, on our production cluster. We couldn't take our production cluster down for 30 days and no one else could use while we ingest this historical data set. We used the opportunity to eventually fine tune and got the most advantage out of tuning our, tuning our cluster. We eventually got it down to four days, right? So you need, it before, you need to have an understanding of what your performance is going to be on that cluster. And this goes back to the strong partnership between your application team and, and your operations team. When we were doing performance testing and tuning on our cluster for this client, it was you know, daily workshops with these two teams, um, sometimes all-day sessions when you're actually doing the, kicking off the ingestion. Your first ingestion is going to fail. Your second one might fail as well, right? So it's a partnership between the application team and the operations team to really look at that log data to figure out where those failures are, troubleshoot together, come up with solutions. And this is where that operation support plan comes into place and setting those expectations up front that you're going to need more participation from your operations team than you typically would expect. Keeping an eye out for, so I mentioned these a bit, data multiplication. You can in, quickly increase your data size. You, of, of course, in the beginning, when you're designing your solution, you want to get the most value. You want to keep everything, right? You want to be able to store as much as you possibly can if it's redundant. It's okay, there's going to be some new stuff in there. But you need to think about how that data can be multiplied uh, when it eventually gets ingested into your cluster. Historical data load and performance, so I talked about that a bit as well, is the significant processing that's going to be needed that could lead to unexpected load times. So that's 30 days. And using that as an opportunity to configure and tune your cluster, as well as configure and tune your application to, to make it something more reasonable. So let's talk about a client who, who did this well. One that we recently uh, finished up, a financial services provider that uh, specializes in money transfers. Their entry point was the big data strategy as well, uh, and recently deployed to production replatform of the risk management system and the reporting applications. So you can imagine that um, uh, you're requesting a transaction with this company and they assess the risk of that specific transaction based off of who you are, who you're sending money to, where you live, you know, some demographic information, and it's you know, a yes, no on whether this transaction is going to uh, be able to be done or not. And then also the reporting. So being able to dig in to those uh, a transaction reports, transaction data from, from an analyst perspective to look at new ways that you can create uh, more intelligent variables that go into your risk analytics calculation. And the challenges that we have there, the data explosion that I was talking about, you know, they wanted to keep everything. They wanted a massive amount of metadata being stored. We saw what was initially a five terabyte um, data load from source move to 25 terabytes once it was ingested into the cluster. We also did in-flight Kerberization, Kerberos, on the cluster itself. This was, this was right before we had a, a product that was going into integration testing that the decision was made that the target environment was going to be Kerberized. That is something you need to watch out for, as I talked about earlier, and it's something that's going to drive remediation it did for us. It was about two weeks of 
working with the vendor, working with the, our customer and our teams as a team to get through that. And I think you know, it, it's mature enough and, and the vendors have an offering that's mature enough where you know what to watch out for, uh, what access patterns need to be supported, um, but it takes more time to look through your code base to identify where those hooks are that are going to be affected by these new capabilities. So it was a challenge that we had, and we were able to successfully work through with participation from our vendor <clears throat> and our operations support team. Keys to success, this is, this is the one where we had a lot of working sessions with our operations team and our application team, looking through logs, understanding where failures are happen, happening, you know, understanding um, where um, a certain application may be, be down or our queues are full and we don't know why. Um, there's, you know, redundant requests being sent to our queues and what's filling it up. Um, it, it's working together as a team to do that troubleshooting was very helpful. Uh, driving tuning through performance testing. So doing that tuning on the cluster before we're doing tuning in the application, both are needed, but we saw our biggest gains with the cluster itself. So just to kind of give it a rehash, right? So the, the three different stages that we're talking about here is, is going from you know, standing start to a big, completing a big data strategy. From completing a big data strategy to building an engineering team and getting that engineering team to a product that you eventually want to be push into deployment and then deploying that solution is, is the final phase there. Looking at your big data strategy, a combined vision between your business and your technology teams. It's your target architecture. Understanding how you're gonna build a solution that's gonna support your most valuable use cases and give you a plan for the next 12 months. Watching out for peer sponsorship, knowing that you're gonna need buy-in from the organization to, be, to move forward. Mucking the cluster, so misconfigurations, um, who has access to this environment, what are we eventually going to be doing with this environment? If we're going to be using it for application development, are we going to have to do some remediation? From strategy to implementation, focus on the business value, looking to build some, show some early successes within six to eight weeks. I'm not talking about something complex, but showing the value and the capabilities of the new, new tooling. Data quality, thinking about how you're, going to, how you're going to take currently unserviceable data sets and making them serviceable for the business. Watching out for Hadoop evolution. You're gonna be tempted, and you might rightly so, wanna take advantages of these new capabilities and features that the vendors are providing. How is that gonna affect your in-flight development? How is that gonna affect your existing applications on that cluster? Managing change, so working with your end users, working with the data scientists, working with the business analysts, getting them involved early so they understand what new tooling they're going to be working with. What new capabilities can they see? How are they going to be able to, you know, what, more, what new value are they going to be able to drive out these new tools? And doing some of that early troubleshooting up front and getting them involved and getting feedback. And then deploying a solution. Performance testing, capacity planning, talk through those. Watching out for target environment change, so the Kerberos, right? Or just... Your, your new version of, 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 of CDH, for example. And then also data explosion. You should be aggressive up front in what you want to store um, and, and what, what metadata you want provided about the data that you have, right? But, but knowing that there's a data multiplication piece to that equation um, that you need to consider and, and do checks on when you're, when you're in application you're deploying to production. Okay, so I think uh, that, that concludes the, the meat, the content. I know I've, I've given you guys um, a lot of examples from, from what my past experiences have been with different customers and clients. Maybe just to give you a bit more context on, on Think Big and who we are. Uh, I'll, go, I'll go through this quickly, and, and we can then uh, move on to some questions. So founded in 2010, 
Um, we've got well over 100 people. Um, I think I was employee maybe number 15 about three, four years ago. Um, and we've really been able to expand since then. Um, we, we involve ourselves in both strategy, obviously, data science, so employ a number of, you know, PhD level math uh, statistician that who can apply advanced analytics and advanced models against the data sets that we're working with at our clients. And obviously data engineering makes up a large proportion. Implementation of these solutions is primarily what we do as a company. We're vendor neutral. Um, we don't have um, anyone in the race, right? We're looking from a top-down perspective on what the best tooling and platforms are going to be from our clients. And when I mean top-down, when we're starting at those use cases, understanding the capabilities and requirements of those use cases, and then the abilities of today's technology within, within the Hadoop ecosystem and what's the best fit. Agile de development, um, we have to be able to help our clients realize that value in six to eight weeks. So, you know, we're the ones really helping them determine and drive that quick value, those quick wins they can see because we can bring in the talent and expertise um, that we've built over the past few years. Um, we have a ThinkBate Academy where we help our, help our clients build those skill sets. Hadoop 101, Hive 101. Um, we give the same training to our clients that we do to our own people. Global delivery model. So we've got uh, opportunities for application support, uh, managed services, both offshore, nearshore, onsite in Salt Lake City. So a rather expansive um, capability. So that concludes my conversation piece, but uh, Paul, I'll, I'll hand it off to you to see if there's any um, specific questions that may have come up um, during my conversation. All right. Well, thanks. Appreciate that, Mike. So there are some good questions in the console here, and we have about seven minutes, so let's see what we can do in that seven minutes. So the first one is, this sounds like this is somebody, I'm going to paraphrase it, maybe somebody in an organization that's struggling with this, but she asks, how would you recommend responding to the statement that Hadoop is just another data storage facility? Maybe, I don't know if they're finding that out in their organization, or maybe a business user is asking them that, but how would you recommend responding to that statement, Mike? So, so Hadoop provides a lot of capabilities just beyond data storage, right? Um, so it's an entire ecosystem of applications, not just the storage capability. It provides hooks into a number of different anal analytical applications where you can generate views on your data that you weren't able to before, combine different types of data sets, structured, unstructured. Those types of use cases are very visible and very well known. It also provides, think, think of the opportunity that you have where you're talking about offload ETL or offload batch processing. That, those are very common use cases that uh, we help support in our clients. And why they're valuable is because that batch processing, that ETL is often happening in your just another data storage facility in your data warehouse, which is oftentimes the most costly. Hadoop provides a lower cost option for that where you can offload that type of that processing, free up opportunities in your data warehouse to run more business critical types of reporting or analytics and reducing your footprint within that data warehouse as well. So it's not just a storage facility, it's, it's, it's an area in which, now I know we probably have a lot of data scientists on this, uh, on this call, but it's an area in which you can store many different distinct types of data sets but provides the ability to store data sets in a manner you haven't been able to do before and pair them together. So it's a capability. Uh, it's a data capability. It's not just a storage capability. All right. There's another question about, you said in the 
earlier part of the discussion to avoid one use case, but then you started, you said sometimes you might end up with 30 or 50. So how many is too many? So how many is too many? Well, <clears throat> if I ask my clients that, they'll say, give me every use case you've discovered. You know, they want a comprehensive list and they want to know everything that they're, the different groups have said. So we've, we've come out of the use case definition with 100 use cases. Now, if I think about how many is too many, I'm, gonna, I'm going to put it in the box of we're only going to look at the, the next 12 months. So key in on the fact that um, Hadoop is moving very quickly and its capabilities are changing and evolving, this point I made. Looking beyond 12 months from a strategy engagement is just, in, in, in my opinion, difficult to support. So when we place use cases, and once again, they're use cases of specific business value and they're going to have varying difficulty, but to give you an idea of a use case and how many we use, maybe like... Um, seven to 10 would be the ones that we can place in a 12-month roadmap. So you're looking at, I mean, you got to think about building your cluster. That Stand up a cluster, configuring it, and getting the bones together could take, you up, could take you up to six weeks, right? And then landing your different data sets, preparing those different data sets, and the scope and scale of, of those use cases are really going to determine what you have. But how many is too many? 20 would be too many. 15 would be probably too many. But focusing on a good 7 to 10, depending on scope, is probably um, a place to start. All right. There's another question. You must have mentioned this on one of your slides. But the question is that reporting seems more appropriate for a traditional data warehouse. So why should we do that on Hadoop? Reporting, because reporting is rather expensive from a processing perspective and to do it in your data warehouse. Oftentimes our enterprises, who, oftentimes our clients who want to um, update their enterprise data warehouse will have to spend millions to find incremental value to do that. You can offload your, your reporting capabilities or you know, offload the processing of those reports to Hadoop and then push them somewhere else, you're freeing up that capacity in your processing, right? If you're able to push different views of that data into a tool like Hive and have your analysts be able to query that data like they do SQL, that's something of value as well because you're pairing, you're, once again, you've got access to new data sets that you may not have access to in your data warehouse. So you'll be able to query new types of data through Hadoop that you weren't able to before. So I think, I think it's one, it's one that's going to be access to new types of data sets that you wouldn't have in your, your typical data warehouse. And then also it's, it's, a, it's a metric of cost. Being able to offload that processing that you're doing for reporting uh, can translate into millions and millions of dollars in cost savings for our clients. All right. We've got probably time for one more, maybe two, we'll see. The, the question is, and I'm sure you have a good answer for this one, do you have any tips or examples for overcoming a lack of business sponsorship? That's a, probably a big challenge. Sure. Um, sometimes we have to convince, we have to convince our clients of the, of the value behind um, Hadoop. So not so much today, but in, in years past, um, there were – a lot of companies arguing against Hadoop, right, and bringing it into the bringing it into your ecosystem. So it's some tips when you're talking to the to the business teams is frame it in in a conversation that they can understand. Um, typically, the business teams don't necessarily care about the technology themselves. Big data to them is just a marketing term. Big data to me is a marketing term, right? And Hadoop is the technology that um, they may not be keyed in on. So it's understanding the challenges that they have today, their day-to-day. -day. Are they being asked, um, you know, we're talking through a client today where uh, business executives are being asked by their um, management, uh, what, are, what are specific KPIs and metrics that 
about the business that they're responsible for. The business executives have a very difficult time answering those questions without an analyst in the room with them. And that's because the tooling that's provided to them is very difficult to use, difficult to get those answers out of, right? So having them understand the value that Hadoop and big data can provide for their bit different businesses, what KPIs are important to them? What different data sets could they pair together to have a more intelligent view into that specific KPI? Maybe it's churn, maybe it's churn analysis, maybe it's um, cart abandonment, market basket analysis, right? What data sets could be used to make a more intelligent view into that KPI? So thinking about what their data is, what their challenges are, what their value levers are, and associating the technology and how the technology can help solve those problems, rather than saying, here's what Hadoop can do, here's what big data can do, but making it personal for them and understanding what their drivers are for their specific business. All right, that makes a lot of sense, make it personal. All right, well, we have run out of time, and there are some other questions in the console, so if we did not answer your question today, someone from Think Big will follow up with you, and that concludes today's presentation on Hadoop, moving from strategy to production. If you want to view today's webcast at some later date, links to a recorded version of the presentation will be sent to you via email. And of course, your content widget at the bottom of the webinar console has links directly to the slides and other materials. So on behalf of Think Big and Mike Portel, thank you all for your participation.